Hello. Uh, hi there. Uh, wait a minute. Tony Magno is joining us. Uh, <laughs> As people Thanks, are all joining us, uh, Dan, we, have, we only have a still picture of you tonight, Dan. We oh, only have where? a still picture of uh, oh. of Tony as well. So, uh, oh, my camera. There we go. Well, let me go. Let me go turn my light on. Here. <laughs> What's happening here? When we do TV, I've got I've got to turn on the light. Uh, see, you can all see me better. Ah, there's, there's Rob. Okay. Uh, Am I on now? Yeah. No, you. Have, we don't have a picture from you, Dan. But okay. Uh, well, uh, by I, the way, to people who who think about calling the show. Turn on the light. Oh, they say that. Oh, I got to turn something off here. Hold on a second. There's Rob. Uh, it's always I got to. Let me try. I'm gonna try again. What? <laughs> anyway. Um, we're all here now, I guess it looks like. Uh, uh, and uh, there's 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 my hero, Rob uh, Rob Alfano, uh, because of all the fine work that he does. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Is it getting to be too much, Rob? Um, no, I mean it's it's pretty much at its um, it's pretty much as much as I could take. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I could. Uh, do too much more yeah 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 <laughs> it's got to be about 30 Rob's hours a week 25 to 30 hours a week that really that much yeah yeah i'm almost like a full-time employee <laughs> yeah. yeah me too with no uh, pay or benefits huh so with no pay or benefits well uh, no pay or benefits he has a benefit I bet he okay. feels. I bet he feels real good when these things go on on the weekend and they sound as good as they do, don't oh, you, Rob? It. Absolutely love uh -huh. it. You know that's the payoff. I got a note yesterday from Miranda, and it was just I have a Facebook uh, message, and she just said, "I got off tonight, and I just felt so good about doing a show. You know, I I, I felt a high. You know, and yeah. and uh, you know, and I." I I, I kind of was a little jealous of that because yeah. it's nice that she has that feeling because I, I don't know that I've had that feeling in a long time. You know, occasionally we'll do a show here and I'll walk off and say, hey, that was a great show. <laughs> but, you know, I don't just get the high from doing it anymore. Yeah. Well, oh, it's like, you know, heroin. <laughs> so It's like heroin. Yeah, you start out, you, then you build up the tolerance, and you've been doing it for all. You don't get high anymore. Yeah. And the problem is, once you, <laughs> you you don't get the you don't get the high from it anymore. But if you stop, you got the monkey on your back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll, exactly. I'll stick with alcohol. Uh, I'm not gonna get the heroin. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you, Alex. If you don't mind? Yeah. <laughs> well, go ahead. What's the question? I, I'm waiting for permission. Um, I said uh, what? I didn't. Said, hear you, I didn't hear you say what. Oh, now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, everybody, quiet. What? Okay. Anyway, um, our Czechoslovakian friend David posted a picture of uh, a PT's grilled T-shirt from Wilmington. I know she took it down right away. Why did you take it down? Was it because it was associated with me, or by uh, comment on it about you know PT's bitch slapping five guys seven days a week? Um, I love David. As opposed yeah, to David's you. David's a good guy. As it's opposed to you. I, in fact, I wish David would call more often because I really, I really like him. Uh, 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 but he was posting a lot of stuff. And, you know, a lot of times it was like pictures of things people had said. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and I don't even remember the PT t-shirt at all. But I had to... I didn't take all of them off, but I took uh, about three or four of them off because there was just too much being posted, and uh, it, it it was getting a little cluttered. So okay, all right, good yeah. enough. Yeah, uh, but I didn't even I didn't even see that one. I don't even know what you're talking I, about. Yeah, I sent. Well, David was like busting my balls because you know he thought I said PP's grill, mm -hmm. and so I sent him a yeah. T-shirt from the grill, you know PP's grill, and then he posted. He sent to you. You know, a copy of the T-shirt saying PT's Grill and said like Doug's favorite joint to hang out at. And then I put, posted a comment saying bitch slapping five guys seven days a week. So I didn't know whether I it was didn't. Just... I didn't see that. Yeah. No, I yeah, didn't no, see but... it. I really didn't. Okay. Well, no, but yeah, man, I didn't. Think I, I yeah. didn't take offense to it or anything like that. But I thought it was kind. Of, it was sort of like, hmm. 
Yeah, was it against five guys or because yeah. it was PP's or whatever? Well, PP's grill is just funnier. Yeah, yeah. PP. PP yeah, it yeah. is. And yeah. it's like, yeah. like the next one wasn't the best. And so, like, you're all like talking about PP and all. And I'm like, what the fuck are they talking about? All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Shut up for a while. Hi, Miranda. Hello. Now, what, weren't you Hello. Say, weren't you saying that about uh, about uh, doing the show last night that you went away feeling like you were high or whatever? You had a rush. Yeah, it gave me it. It just at the end of the show, you know, I go into it so nervous and I've I've got so many jitters and everything. But at the end of every show, I just have this incredible rush. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Yeah. Well, you know, you've given poor Rob a, a little more work to do. <laughs> <laughs> on the weekends because we tried to figure out what to do with you and i said to him i said i don't want to put any re new pressure on you so just take two of her shows and glue them together and that's pretty much what you did right rob that's what i did so there's an intro and you know a spot in between the two shows but um yeah it's just the two shows back to back right? yeah so that's the, the, I'm so the time consuming part is really to stop and listen to it all and make the you know and write everything and do all that you know the edits putting it together is a five minute process really yeah well you know if, if ever you feel you want to kind of slough off on a weekend you could do that with any of our shows just take the best show of the week and rerun it you know to t to take the easy way out i know you don't want to yeah but i'm it, just saying if there's ever a week where you just go you know it's like i can't do it this week Huh? That's like Sophie's choice in that case, right? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? With my show, it's not Sophie's choice. You just cut out four <laughs> of them and just throw a dart to figure out which one you're going to play. <laughs> um, but uh, I was listening to Miranda last night, and I'm jealous of her microphone. I really am. It sounds great. That's, uh, yours does, too. I have the worst-sounding microphone on the network. <laughs> and I've got a great microphone. Well, I think I think Miranda, like me, has a an audio processor on it, don't you? Um, actually, I I just have the mixer, and uh, I'm, I do have a cloud lifter on it in order to uh, to boost the gain. Uh, but well, you see, unlike you and I, Rob, she has an excellent voice. Yeah, and she doesn't. I was, I was gonna say it's her voice. She, that... she doesn't need to process. No, but I was listening to you last night, and I first of all, uh, I just said to myself, "Boy, she's got a great voice for radio." She does. You know? she, she really great. does, doesn't she? Uh -uh. And, and not to sound sexist or anything, but she's very easy on the eyes too. So yeah, uh, you just sounded oh, you, you just sounded sexist. And hi, Jim. We have a full house right uh, now, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, I'm so so happy. Let's see yeah. here. Yeah, because yeah. no, nobody's freezing up. Uh, but uh, no, I was listening to you last night. You did 20 minutes on coffee, and I was I was riveted listening to it. You know, yeah, I can get pretty passionate about coffee. Who, who, who ever thought that? But you put me down, and I want to <laughs> I want to clear something up. <laughs> The only yeah, reason right. for this like sugary stuff. milk, okay, that I that I drink here, is because it has sufficient amounts of caffeine in it to wake me up so I can get through two hours of this drivel. All right. Is uh, that a frappuccino? That's a frappuccino. Yeah. I really like them. Yeah, those are good. Well, no, but I would rather drink the uh, just the iced uh, coffee they have. So it's so uh, wake you up to go go go. What does that mean? It's a it's a that wham song. Wake me up. Before oh yeah, wake so, so does. It's wake me up before you go go. Squirrel. What does that have to do with frappuccino? <laughs> squirrel. It's, it's squirrel. squirrel. <laughs> wake me up before you go go. Oh oh yeah, that reminds me of frappuccino. That, if I were on that show Password, you remember Password, where you had to give out like one word and then the person had to come oh, up with the word. And if the Douglas word I had, they were going for was Frappuccino, and they you, uh, you said to me, "Wake me up before you go go," I think I would lose. Okay, now you win the grand prize because there would be no <laughs> way. Everybody, everybody else will, except for you. But anyway, so my favorite episode of Password, or my favorite Password thing, is the Odd Couple when. Felix oh. And tuna fish, Aristophanes, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> what? Do you remember the odd uh, couple when they go on the? Uh, they go on password. Yeah. Was it 
when he gets dressed up. No, when he's the. Uh, oh well, they also did. Let's make a deal. Let's make a deal, and he gets the tuna fish, and his Oscar's the horse's ass, and he's like, take, take the money. <laughs> and Felix is like, no, we're going, we're gonna go for this, and they get tuna fish. That's classic. They, they got tuna fish. Okay, I never saw that episode. That's a good one. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so I was listening to Miranda last night, and she was talking about coffee. And the only reason I'm doing the Frappuccino is because it's the easiest thing for me before I go on the air. I don't want to have to go in there. Well, I don't even have a coffee maker anymore. I think we do have one. We have one of the ones you mentioned, uh, the uh, Keurig. The Keurig, right? <laughs> I have the Keurig, and I also have like about five crates of K cups. Mm. That every time I went to Costco, I went, oh, look, Starbucks K-Cups. Oh, look, something else K-Cups. Before you knew it, I had all these K-Cups, and I'd never use them. It's up in the – so it, so I don't have time to make a complaints about it. cup of coffee. So what's good about this is it just gives me a little – jacks me up a little bit before I go on, you know? I was just teasing you. I know you were just teasing me, but I just felt I had to defend my use of uh, the sugary – milk coffee substance that i and by the way this isn't a frappuccino have you been to starbucks yeah you ever right. ordered a frappuccino it's fra get does it taste anything like this watery piece of swill that they sell in the bottles i don't know they probably taste different in the bottle oh I it's got like cream on the top it's and like it's like just pure sugar <laughs> Yeah, I would like rather a... just spoon sugar into well, my mouth. Well, here's my other here's my other thing, which is of course a, a diet diet Coke Zero, Coke Zero. You drink all that and and not get up for two hours. There's no way you go to sleep till four o'clock in the morning. I don't go to sleep till four o'clock <laughs> in the morning. I know you're up. Like, to like before I go there, on maybe. the air here, before I go on the air here every night, I say to girlfriend, I can't do the show tonight. I'm not I'm not going to make it two hours. I'm not going to stay awake. And then by the time the show's over, I can't go to sleep. My day is drink, beginning. Drink beer, you pass out. So yeah, we realize that, Doug. Yeah. You'll yeah. also not know what you're saying and don't listen to anybody else. That's the uh, <laughs> the downside. So pass out, but not soon enough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I want to ask Josh. Josh, how was your, uh, your day? You, I, I know you have something to talk about because you mentioned something on my Facebook page about somebody that I have found over the years to be particularly offensive <laughs> to me, and that's Chuck Todd. <laughs> you like that, did you? Yes, I oh, did. What do you do? Yeah, I don't... I don't... Chuck Todd's over at NBC. He's their chief yeah. Washington correspondent. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like their top that political... Show. MSNBC. Yeah, I mean, but they, they sent I mean, him over to Normandy, right? Yeah, I was listening on the streaming on Sirius, but it sounded. I think he was there though, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I gathered. Yeah, yeah, they they sent him over. I I just, I mean, if they want him to anchor the coverage, that's fine. Uh, have anybody anchor it you want? Just tell them to shut up. <laughs> just anchor the coverage, you know. I mean, I just, you know, like I was telling my wife earlier, I said, you know, he had Michael, he had Michael Bischloss, and Rick. Atkinson on mm -hmm. for multiple segments and these are and uh, these are premier historians in okay. my opinion All right. Rick Atkinson is brilliant yeah and to have those two guys on in the same interview I wouldn't speak a word I would just let him talk the entire you know I mean but I understand it's a network and he has to but he wouldn't shut up I mean I, you know it's when Rick Atkins, Atkinson speaks Rick Atkinson authored what's called the Liberation Trilogy, mm -hmm. which is three books on the liberation of Europe, which follows the Allied uh, or the American troops, basically yeah. the whole Allied movement, though, from 1941 after Pearl Harbor all the way to VE Day in May mm -hmm. of 1945 in Europe. It's yeah. the entire story over three volumes in 15 years. I mean, he is literally the preeminent expert on the European theater. And... He'd say about 15 or 20 words, and Chuck Todd would say something. And then he'd say another 15 or 20 words, and Chuck Todd would say something. I found myself saying, would he just shut up and learn something? Well, here's the problem. They, they take guys like Chuck Todd, who's a, who's a news reporter, really, and I don't think a particularly good one, but he's a news reporter. 
Uh, and they, because MSNBC wants to plug all their people, they ga- give their reporters shows. Like Andrea Mitchell has one too, but she's a reporter. She's not a host of a show. Uh, and 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 so Chuck Todd's interviewing skills aren't probably up to what they should be, or, or up to what anybody would think they should be. And he doesn't realize certain things about interviewing, like know when to shut up. Yeah. You know that that if you've got somebody who's really bright and really smart and saying things, just let him go. You know, the reason yeah. the guest is there is to work for you. Your job isn't to sit there and interrupt him every five seconds and not get him to do the very thing you brought him on to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, if anybody's listening that knows, for instance, who Rick Atkinson is, I mean, they'll understand what I'm saying. And Rick Atkinson is like most historians. He's pretty long-winded, like I can get. Yeah. You know, uh, no, not but, you. but he... Uh, but he knows what he's talking about. I mean, he has a yeah. lot to say. And, you know, Chuck Todd, I guess the best way to describe it, he was basically doing what Chris Matthews does on Hardball, which at, I like Chris Matthews, but at times when you watch Hardball, you find yourself saying he'll ask a question, then he'll keep asking more questions, and and you find yourself saying, Chris, if you just shut up, the guy would give you the answer. Now, on a political show with debate and back and forth, even though it gets a little off-putting sometimes, I think that's fine. But on a day like today, and on the type of coverage that he was covering, I don't. I just didn't think there was any place for it. I mean, I, I, I thought it was hard to listen to personally. Well, if you have a good guest, you de- you defer to the guest. You know, I mean, uh, 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 I, uh, I also don't believe in doing interviews. I believe in having conversations. Right. But I don't know what Chuck Todd had to contribute to a discussion with a historian rather Nothing. than ask the his, you know, rather, you know, just just draw the historian out, you know, and, right. and that's the problem. We we're living in a world full of amateurs. Um, <laughs> local television, local news is an example. I call t- teenage time. Now, maybe it's that I've gotten so old that all these people who are doing the news at 6 o'clock look like kids to me, but I think they are. You know, they, right. ju- they just look like, uh, like maybe they've asked their parents' permission to go down to the TV mm. station and do a newscast. Heck, I'm starting to feel the same way when I watch the news. Yeah, don't feel news. bad. I feel the same way, too. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it's just... Yeah, it was just... I don't know. I just found it, you know, yeah. a little off-putting, that's all. And... And to be honest with you, as I've sat here the last couple of hours, yeah, and I've watched C-SPAN replaying the day's events from Sound. from Normandy, I I don't particularly care for what they did uh, today either. That's I mean not the news, I mean the ceremony. I I found it to be uh, sad, to be honest with you. Uh, it's been more about it's been more about the leaders. Um, well, what the, what, the what, people yeah, who were there? I'll, I'll tell you I, what became the distraction. That's right. You know, this is a day in which. Well, you're right. I, I as I listened to the news, I, the reason why they were celebrating the 70th and not making a big deal about the 75th was because most of those people are going to be dead by that time. Oh, absolutely. You yeah. Know? And so this was the last chance to get a good uh, amount of people who had stormed the beach at Normandy to be there, and I think that was wonderful. But what happened was there was a major distraction going on. And the major distraction was Obama and Putin. And yeah. the whole story about, oh, look, Putin standing next to Obama. Oh, look, they talked for a couple of minutes. It was more about Putin and, and Obama. And then the fact that the French um, uh, uh, prime minister uh, was having them both to dinner, but he had two dinners one for Putin and one for Obama, and they were two and a half hours apart. And all I can imagine is this French fuck having to, you know, eat way too much food. Uh, right. Well, it, it was even more than that, though. It, it was even if that hadn't been going on. Personally, I didn't care for the ceremony. I mean, I didn't care for the fact that they had to wait you know, over an hour for all these leaders to show up one at a time. Mm -hmm. They all walked the red carpet and waved, uh, literally walked the red carpet um, and waved. And, you know, they had a lot of leaders there who, in my opinion, I don't understand what they had to do 
you know, the Czech president was there and the newly elected president of Ukraine. I mean, a bunch of people had nothing to do with D-Day. Right. Um, there was way, way too much emphasis in my mind on the French. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Yeah. I understand that it happened in French, but in France. But let me tell you something. The French were never anything but in our way during World War II. Um, and that's a fact. <laughs> Charles de Gaulle was a prick. Yeah. Who refused to give any kind of help during the invasion when Eisenhower really needed it. And, uh, yeah, you know, they had very little you, if anything to do with it. Let me ask you a question, it. though. The French troops, where were they? Because they weren't in France because France was being held by the Germans, right? Some French fought for the Germans. Um, fought for the Germans? Yeah, we fought the French in uh, North Africa. Um, uh, in 1942, yeah. Um, after the fall of France, uh, some French, under the uh, the, the armistice, Vichy, right? Uh, yeah, under a, a Vichy government, yeah. fought for the Germans under German control, yeah. and there was what was called uh, the Free French Army, which uh, were soldiers that uh, had been able to escape from France, and they were stationed in England, and they were led by Charles de Gaulle. Yeah. Um, who was one of the most vain imbeciles uh, in history, um, you know, who refused to give any help on D-Day if he couldn't be the leader. Uh, you're a very vain man, you know, typical Frenchman. And uh, yeah. <laughs> the, I just thought they were in the, you know, they were in the way today just like they were in the way on D-Day. So apparently they did get it right. Um, you know, I, mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just... I just thought, you know, like their friend, the French president, uh, he's talking now, right now, again, you know, will he ever shut up? Uh, probably not. It was just way too much on them. They had people dancing, and uh, I don't know. I just, I apparently it's just not my taste. Maybe it's just me and people like that. I think probably the only Dance. one there who was there who was actually around at the time the D-Day happened was the Queen. I think she right. was probably alive at the time. Oh yeah, she definitely was. Because I was, uh, you know, she's she's older than I am, I and I was. Uh, D Day she happened yeah. about when I was about four years old, something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so the Queen, who's ninety, certainly was around for D Day, huh? Eighty eight. Eighty eight. Okay. Yeah. 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 I I just I thought the ceremony, in my opinion, was outside of what I would like to see. What were commemoration of D-Day, but I mean that's just my personal. What taste. would you like because, to have seen? Well, I would just like to have seen, you know, the Americans, the British, mm -hmm. um, the Canadians, and a few of the other Allied nations, um, in a smaller ceremony among them, without, you know, the new Prince of England or Princess, what's her name? I mean, she's a nice lady, pretty lady, but I mean. There were all these pictures of her and the didn't, hat. Didn't Prince, it didn't, takes away from didn't the Prince ceremony. William uh, to give a speech Derby. there? Right. And I don't, I would like to have seen a smaller ceremony with a low key speech, uh, something very solemn. You know, Obama's speech got a lot of applause. And it, it was more of a celebratory uh, commemoration than it was a solemn one. And I prefer more solemn. I, I understand I, I what you're saying. I would agree with what you. happened, but not. In the way that they did, well, what, I don't think. was everybody there kind of there trying to score their own points? I mean, as oh, I, I said, as I say, you know, it, it, having Obama and Putin there, I think was a total distraction, because right. everybody was going, you know, it's almost kind of like, you know, what's J Lo going to wear, you know, on E? Yeah. It's the same kind of thing, you know, MSNBC. Oh, what's going to happen with uh, when when Putin meets up with Obama? Oh, look, they're within feet of each other, but they're not even looking at each other. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, come on. I, yeah, I just, I didn't like it. I mean, but like I said, I know you got to get to Doug here, but it's just. <laughs> no, I don't have just, to get to, get to Doug get to here. Doug. It's, it's probably just my taste because, I mean, I, you, you, I've you, never you, been a big, yeah. I, I've never been a big fan of what they did to the beaches, et cetera. The way they basically went in there and tore everything out and they remodeled and they put all of these paved walkways and all. Personally, I would have liked to have seen it left the way that it you mean, was. With all those bars yes. in the water yes. and things I would have like liked that. to have seen yeah. it left just the way it was when we left. They should have left all the pill boxes and mortar boxes, all the artillery pieces. They should have left it. I mean, I understand they might have had to add it a walkway or something for people to get around and not trip in a hole or whatnot. Yeah. But the landscaping and the re I just I would have liked to have seen it left just the way it was when we left. 
You know what I would have done? Uh, uh, this is just me. Uh, if I was going to make it into a commemoration, I think I would have made uh, sculptures of dead bodies on the beaches. I wouldn't have had a problem with that. You know, because to let people know yeah. the enormity of the situation. Yes. For every dead body you knew was that was there, make a sculpture that is on the beach. Yeah. You know, that people have to walk through. Right. Um, but... Now, now, the only thing more annoying about Doug than listening to him <laughs> is the way he holds his fucking hand up. And and tonight, yeah. since we're on the air, uh, 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 j just hold your hand up like you normally do. No, no, it's more it's, it's more it's, obnoxious than it's, that. It's, it's, it's like they're, at they're, a ninety degree angle. <laughs> I got I, it's sitting on the end of the table, so I'm not doing the high. It is Hitler so. Splits. It is so really absolutely hits. annoying. Oh look, Jim, Jim, there's Jim, doing his. There we go. That's good, Jim. Listen, this, this is Mark. I'm gonna See, lift it up. This is it right here. It's on a table. It's lifted up. I'm not doing a high Hitler slip. But anyway, I was going I think Josh brought up yesterday. You know, you're talking about like, why are we doing the 70th instead of 75th? Mm -hmm. But I think Josh brought up yesterday, like, you know, the last wind talker just recently passed away. And, you know, that was the Indians that, you know, even based, you know, a movie on. And so, I mean, unfortunately, you know, you know our veterans are, you know, passing away. So that's why we're doing the 70th. But, um, yeah. So, but, you know, the other thing kind of surprised me, too, is sort of like, okay, we lost like 100,000 on D Day and all that. It's like, how come we don't have a celebration? I don't wait, know if it's because it's Russia wait, or whatever. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I mean, I mean, we didn't lose oh, that many. Oh, hold on a second. <laughs> how many was it? Uh, it wasn't 100,000. Well, 10, of all the Allied troops, there were about 9,000 yeah. on D-Day, which approximately about 6,000 of that was American casualties. And I believe that's dead. I don't think that includes, I don't think that's dead and wounded. I believe that's killed in action. The six thousand. Does that also include paratroopers and so on? Uh, that's all American troops. But, but that's anyway, that nine thousand number is all Allied troops. That's uh, Canadian, British, American. There were a few French. Suppose we had to make them feel good. Yeah. And um, I'm not fond of but the French. Anyway, but how come we don't have a like a you know um, you know a celebration for what the Russians went through, you know, fighting on the Eastern Front? I mean, they lost like a, yeah. a billion folks there. I mean, well, they have their own. How many? The, how many? Of the Russians lose? It was in the millions, wasn't it? About it was twenty-five a, yeah. million people. Yeah, the and, Russians and, lost. The Russians lost bread. more people. Uh, the Russians lost more troops in the battle for Stalingrad than the Americans lost in the entire war. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's like a big deal is made over D-Day. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. You know, I'm not saying D-Day is not important or anything, but it's almost like, you yes, know, what yes, the Yes, that is exactly what you're yeah. saying, Doug. <laughs> no, I'm not no, saying That's exactly what you're saying. If you had listened to what what uh, what uh, Josh was saying last night, which I thought have. was fascinating, was that D-Day was significant in that it may have been the most important moment in in any kind of strategic history. Am I right about that, Josh? It's like one battlefront compared to another. No, but he, he took it beyond that. I mean, all the Cold yeah. War, even the things that are happening today are as a result of what happened on the beach at Normandy that day. Yeah, I think you could make an argument for that. I mean, I suppose the argument could be, had the Russians taken Stalingrad, would that have changed world history in the same manner as if we had been repelled in Normandy and had to have pulled back and regrouped? Um, and I, th I think the answer would be totally different. Had they taken Stalingrad, I think that would have been horrible. Um, had we been repelled in Normandy, I think that would have been oh, life-altering. Yes. Yeah, so uh, probably two different things. Well, yeah. the siege of Stalingrad or... Was it Leningrad or Stalingrad? Stalingrad. I don't know. Stalingrad. Okay. It was just a siege, basically, by the Nazis. They just wanted to starve out the entire town, and they would not stop until everybody died. And pretty much that's and, kind and, of no And way. Stalin pretty much said, you, you, you know, if, if you don't stay there and fight, I'm going to turn around and kill you. Well, yeah, he, well, it was he, the Germans who ended up starving themselves out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Russians. The yeah. Russians just flat out lasted them there. Yeah, 
you know, I mother nature on that one there. I always read. Uh, there's a quote from a book by Dollar Donald L. Miller where he has a diary of someone. I always mm. I gave that to my wife before. Where there's a a woman who talks about how at first we ate the rats, and when there were no more rats, we ate the cats, and when there were no more cats, we ate the dogs, and when there were no more dogs, we, we ate. ate in some cases, we ate the children who had died, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. And she just kept going and going and going and talking about what they ate to get by. Yeah, the only question I would the have, left. The only question yeah. I would have about that, and I know it'll sound tasteless, is why the kids? Because they're they're tender. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Uh, you know, well, it's like a veal calf, like, like baby back ribs. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like veal, right, Rick? Baby back ribs. Baby back ribs. <laughs> no, there are numerous. There were numerous. <laughs> Documented cases of <laughs> baby burgers, baby burgers yeah. uh, of that happening. Yeah, five guys. Don't try to top the joke, <laughs> Doug. It was already made very sufficiently and doesn't need for you to try to be funnier than the other guy. Uh, I think the reason, though, that we don't do a, uh, a huge close, celebration folks. for this or for anything that happened on the on the Eastern Front with Russia is probably just because that's a, a Russia that's a like a singular issue um, yeah. you know the Eastern Front was basically Russia versus the Germans and the Western Front was the Germans versus the rest of the world yeah um, so it was a larger allied effort with so many different countries um, I, so that would go on top of what I was talking about a minute ago with it being probably two different things I think that's probably the the reason. I mean, <laughs> if the Russians just don't do it, I guess. Everybody I mean, now when they want to talk is doing the most obnoxious salute that they can possibly do. <laughs> yes, Dan. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I did see this uh, video. It was a video on YouTube about um, Stalingrad. And uh, they did an interview with the, and the guys, they were just could only dig mass graves because people were just dying so quickly. There is a big park there that commemorates, you know, where all these mass graves are, the hallowed ground. And there are just hundreds of thousands of people buried in these graves. And they did have an interview with the guy. And uh, he said a lot of the soldiers, because they were starving too, they just would fall into the graves dead. So it was pretty... Horrendous. Let me just announce to somebody who's trying to call right now. Bob Eberth is trying to call. Bob, we can't take your call because if I do, we will go over our limit on having video-assisted discussion. I'll be more than lucky. I'll, I'll, be more than to, I'll be more than happy to hang up on you. I mean, hang up. Well, I just I just hung up on him, so you could. But we will get rid of you first. The next, yeah, but, the next good yeah, person fine. that calls. Fine, you should have mentioned that before, Doug. Jeez. Yeah. By the way, do you have that sound effect you were using on your show, Miranda, for, for Doug? <laughs> do you have it? Did you not just hear it? Oh, no, I didn't hear I'm it. honored and humbled. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me check my levels. Okay. It doesn't. Squirrel. Oh. <laughs> Squirrel. Well, yeah, because you remember what the dog's name was in, in, uh, in it Up. Play the, the original... The, the longer one? Yeah, play the longer one. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. <laughs> My master made me this call. He is a good and smart master, and he made me this caller so that I may talk. Squirrel! <laughs> <laughs> that just really reminded me of the interaction between between you two. You know, you, you Alex, you would play the role of uh, Ed Asner's character, and, yeah, yeah. and Doug would play Doug. Because get it, I'm old. Um, well, and every time, and I'm very, and I'm you know, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, if we can uh, digress here, because we will get back to this, Josh. Don't worry. Uh, uh, but um, up the beginning of that picture, when they tell the love story of the two of them, is absolutely wonderful. I, are you still there, Tony? Oh, he's, he's coming back. I think. He's in the limbo. There we go. Okay. And it's very, sad. it's very sad too. I mean, you know, it was like watching a kids movie. I was about to cry, you know, when the, yeah. you, know, the you know, the lady's like, you know, stumbling up the hill and all that. Mm -hmm. Well, so. arm, armed with that information, I'm overwhelmed, Doug. Uh, <laughs> you should be. You should be. I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. I, I got a heart. Anyway. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. Believe it or not. Unfortunately, it keeps beating. Uh, <laughs> Rick, what was your take on uh, on on uh, on today? Um, actually, I was you know pretty preoccupied with work, but uh, it, it's just it's gotten overblown. It is just too much garbage going along with it. Um, you know, I remember, yeah, as I've said before, my father uh, fought in World War II, mm -hmm. and uh, it was kind of a you know a day of, of remembrance uh, when he was alive, and and that's how it should be. What's going on now is, is just a circus. You know, in those days, and correct me again, uh, Josh, if I'm wrong, and I rely on you because you've done so much reading on these uh, subjects, we think of the war of being just the guys on the front lines, but that it, there were only one out of every ten people was on the front lines. The rest were backup. Am I right about that, Josh? I don't know if that's the number or not. I know that... Uh United States had about 16 million people in uniform. Um, so I don't know quite how many served. Uh, uh, so that's probably about right, because if you think about 16 million people, uh, you know, we had, let's say, between Europe and Japan, you know, a few hundred thousand, maybe half a million altogether. Um, you know, I suppose that would be about right. But Oh, yeah, it was far. I mean, it was a... Hey. There was almost nobody in America I've got, that didn't uh, yeah. have, you know, what Rick Atkinson calls skin in the game. Okay, hey, listen, you know, before before you continue, I want you to continue. Would everybody get out of sight of their camera so that when Doug comes back, he'll think we're all gone? <laughs> just to see, see what happens. Because I can, I can uh, turn on this mic here, and I can talk to you uh, from here. See? Okay, uh, we can still see you. Wait a minute, he'll, he'll be coming back soon, I'm sure. But now everybody is, uh, is no, away. Tony, I see Tony. Huh? Get out of the way, Tony, Tony. get out of the shot, Tony. There you go, just get out of the shot. I'm leaning, I'm, uh, oh, 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 oh. I, I'm leaning back. I, I, I'm waiting for him to uh, come back because, see, we, we have all these cameras, folks. Yeah. And uh, the, <laughs> uh, the cameras are... Uh, 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 yeah. So oh, anyway, we we're talking about uh, yeah. Normandy. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. And then what do you say? But, yeah, that, Normandy. What? I, what I guess that one in ten number yeah. would, would probably be about right. But what I was, yeah. I think, what I was saying was it was uh, a total effort. Like uh, I said, you know, Rick Atkinson refers to it as you know how many people had skin in the game. Yeah. You know, one of the numbers that he shared today was that, you know, recent study has basically shown and proven that 90 percent of the american workforce in some way or another held a job that directly yeah. in some way or another supported the war effort right i mean nine out of ten people that were employed had some kind of a job that directly supported the war effort and you know out of the ten percent uh those people probably you know uh, lunch counter waitresses they were serving the people who did so i mean there was almost no one who didn't have a direct, you know, effort or involvement or know somebody in the armed forces or supported them in some way or another. It's just not okay. like that with, you know, today's conflicts. Okay, everybody, you can come back. You can come back. <laughs> Doug, how'd you like that? We disappeared on you. I had to take a leak. <laughs> <laughs> and Miranda was you lying want me on, on the floor. You want me on a camera, did Take a leash. <laughs> but you know, hey, uh, hey, okay. hey, you bring beer. You know, that's what happens there. So. As I watch this, though, I'm sitting here. Well, watching then don't this drink right beer, Doug. What's that? Yeah. Then don't drink beer. No way. A drink is bad yeah. for you. Nah, everything is yeah. bad for me. No, look at you vaping. You're like, you know, don't drink beer. You're vaping. I, I bet you I, that's going to come back and haunt your ass, sir. <laughs> I don't drink beer and I don't vape. I was vaping. Dan, I'm yeah. talking to Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, so you know, the only thing, I, the reason I asked that question of you, uh, 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 Josh, was that when you think about it, if, if maybe one out of ten people was in the front lines, then these people were all part of a lottery who hit that beach. You know, and they were they were cannon fodder. They yeah. knew when they hit that beach, a certain percentage of them are going to be dead by the end of the day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've I watched interviews 
uh, with veterans all day yeah. and in the past and actually one of the veterans that uh, Chuck Todd had on this morning yeah. um, as bad as we talked about him earlier uh, you know besides the point the the veteran that he interviewed um, one of them this morning you know he asked him how did your uh, you know for example how did your immediate CO prepare you directly before the invasion and he said well you know he said that's an interesting story he said when we were we were all lined up and getting ready to go on to the landing craft we were going through equipment check and everything mm -hmm. and you know they were toughening us up and they were preparing us yeah and he said they were they were very straight with us he said he walked down the line we're all lined up and he said he just he tapped each one of us on the shoulder as he walked and he counted one two three dead one two mm. three dead and he and he said in that oh, that was that was how that he said that's how they prepared us and he said and, he, and then he joked and he said now luckily when he got to me I was a number three and I wasn't a dead yeah. so <laughs> you know he says I yeah. felt better about it after that but you know so they always had that humor too but he he said that's that's they said they were very very straight with us that that's it was a, well, you know it's, it's Friday night not, it's Friday night let me not uh, let me let me change the subject here for a second it's Friday night and uh, it, it, it we have video. And so it kind of becomes show and tell. And, and look, I'm going to blow up the picture here of, of what Rob is doing right now. There he is with his oh, cat. Kitty, kitty. Drugging his pussy. Not, not, oh, jeez. Uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, you say it's a rag doll, right? Yeah, she's a rag doll. Now, am I right? They, uh, there's something about rag, rag dolls. Doll. Will you shut the fuck up, Doug? Jeez sorry, almighty. Sorry. That's your first That's your first warning, Doug. Okay. One more warning, you're gone. Okay? Weapon of three. Okay, you're gone, Doug. No, 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 no. Please, please. Oh, okay. Please. Anyway. Thank you. Uh, uh, the ra I heard something. What was it about rag dolls that they can't walk very well or they... they they almost have to be picked not, up from one place to another. Huh? They're not climbers. They're not climbers. Yeah, she won't. She'll stay low to the ground. She's, you know, yeah. she doesn't oh. uh, <laughs> go up real high. Yeah, but like you to be up real high. Like she, she didn't just jump up on your lap. You had to pick her up. She, well, yeah, and she'll never jump up on my lap. Yeah. She'll jump up on the couch or something like that, yeah. but she'll never jump directly into my lap. Now, how much for her size? It looks like you need a lift for her. She's uh, only about ten pounds, but it's all fur. That was ten pounds. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah she's about yeah, ten. Yeah, like, like a thirty-pound cat there. Oh, I had oh, a friend man. who had a thirty-pound cat. His name was Michael O'Donnell, who used to be <laughs> Mr. Mike on Saturday Night Live, and uh, he had a thirty-pound cat when he was living with his then girlfriend Ann Beats. And I, I, I went over to their house and I see this cat, and he's just—he's enormous. And I said, "What does this cat do?" And he says, "Nothing. Yeah, he just he just lies there." <laughs> is that a healthy thirty pounds, or is that just a fat cat? That was uh, on a cat. A hundred uh, thirty pounds is unhealthy. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know. Unless it's a you know like a baby lion. Yeah, they need to be up ten, twelve pounds. I mean, I, I hate to think that. of the cholesterol on that cat. She's a female, and the males can get to be. 16 pounds really yeah but they yeah. look big because of the fur oh yeah she's yeah. all fur if you wet her down she's not nearly as big i'd like to put her on one of those electric machines that makes the hair go up on end yeah, it's all over me right now yeah I'm yeah then just scared. put her on that and just see <laughs> um uh, uh, uh do you do you 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 have dogs right uh tony yeah, I'm getting the puppy next week. We gotta go get her. I really, I've never had a cat. I was really always Good a. For you. So you're gonna show us the puppy on the show? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll show with you. Cause yeah. I should, she's only gonna be like, I'm guessing like this big. My brother says so. Yeah. I'll pick her up and put her on the thing. What kind of dog? A uh, Labrador. Oh. Good dog. Good dog. Beautiful dogs. <laughs> we usually we usually adopt all the dogs, but my brother found a breeder, so he kind of surprised me with it. So I said, yeah. okay. So we got to go pick her up. I didn't go yet. So now they, Rick, Rick, they, Rick is over there with his wife. Uh, I, uh, pardon me, but what's your wife's name again? I, Teresa. Uh, Teresa, of course. I'm sorry, Teresa. She That's is. okay. Yeah, hi. It's terribly rude of me. That's quite all right. So I you, haven't been on in quite a while. Now, whenever we see him, he's in a hotel room somewhere with a hooker. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> That's a cheap sure. one. Huh? But, but he's but he's safe. Uh, uh, but it, 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 
like I know Doug stays at Motel Eight. Where do you stay when you're out on the road, uh, oh, Rick? Thanks. No, it's usually uh, Hampton Inns, Marriott Courtyards, oh, or man. Residence Inn, or you know, they got, great. they got great compared to me. Yeah, yeah the only problem is I got I got bitten by bed bugs this week. Oh my yeah. lord, that would freak yeah. me out. No, I've, it I've happens never, about never once a year. Problem with the cheap hotels I stayed at. So. No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what hotel you're at. It's happened to me in, the hill in some very. I don't want to mention any names, but it's happened to me in in some very good hotels. And it's just, it's one of those things. And uh, yeah. it happens about once a year. And it started happening about eight years ago. Now, do you, and now the, the problem is when you then get a bed bug, let's say, biting you. Yeah. And then you go home. Do you bring any with you? That's no, the problem. What I do, I have a whole routine. I, I checked out what to do. So as soon as I pull into the house, I empty my suitcase in the garage. All the clothes go right into the dryer first. You run the dryer oh, yeah. for a while. Okay. And then for the suitcase, I go out with a hair, a, a blow dryer and go through the whole suitcase. Wow. It's a pain in the ass. But, you know, because, you know, we had a big bed bug problem here in New York City there for a while. All over. Huh? Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, it, it's just that I, I spoke to the hotel. I got my, my night comp. Uh, and they said, you know, we, we have an, uh, an exterminator come in once a month. They even have the dog. To the check. dog when they have a dog that comes goes and yeah, goes exactly. Smell and they have the dog that checks that out. And, you know, it's just one of those yeah. things. Somebody can come in two days after the exterminator who's carrying the bed bugs, and guess what? Yeah, yep. They're bad. Do you I, I, know, I know. Like, she, do you uh, see them? And uh, when they bite, them. they it hurt. Happens. You get bit at about four thirty in the morning. It's the most bizarre thing. And I'm I'll be in bed and I I start itching, and I yeah. it happened the other night. I got up. I went into the bathroom. I said, well, while, I got, while I'm scratching here, I have to pee anyway, so let me go take care of that. <laughs> and I, I noticed the lights, and I, and I said, that's it. It's here. I ran back in, turned all the lights on. I wouldn't go back to bed, but I ruffled through the sheets, and I found it and killed the little fucker. Always three bites in a row. But wait a minute. There only, was only one? I was only one. Back. That's all it takes. I got three bites on it. All I can remember yeah. is that old, uh, that old um, saw, that old rhyme about, you know, uh, big dogs have little fleas upon their backs to bite them, and smaller dogs have even smaller fleas, and so add on infinitum. That's good. <laughs> Never heard that one. Yeah. I would sleep in the lobby after that, Alex. Well, no, I didn't go back to sleep. I, just, you know, I moved well, it's every... better than the hotel I stayed at. I was here at the Sheraton years ago because we came to New York to do some radio shows from New York. I was in San Francisco at the time, and uh, we're uh, we're two things happened. One was um, um, uh, I'm I'm trying to go to sleep, and there's this hammering going on. This is like at one <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and I call down to the front desk, and I go, "There's some hammering going on," and I can't get to sleep. And they say, "Oh, they're doing construction." <laughs> I said, "At one o'clock in the morning in a hotel." You're doing construction? Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, well, I'll call up and tell them to stop. Yeah. You know, I think it, we, just tell them to turn off the chainsaw. I think the hammering we can live with. And the other thing was, I then, I, I guess I had something, my socks or something went under the bed. So I went to look under the bed, and I looked under the bed, and I found a syringe. Oh, my God. <laughs> And this is the Sheraton. This is not some, you know, flea you bag won't hotel. I found the hotel rooms. Well, you found yourself. That was enough <laughs> of a. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> even better. I don't know what I want. I don't want to know what we find in hotel rooms after Doug leaves them. But anyway. <laughs> well, certainly, uh, you know, uh, so certainly, an ultraviolet light, <laughs> light on the sheets would give you a small idea. <laughs> anyway, what were you saying, Doug? And I called the front desk and I was like, "Hey, can you get me, um, you know, my, uh, you know, you know, smoke alarm's not working. Get me to another room because I was afraid some crack whore was gonna come at my damn room." It was like, "Hey, man, open the fucking door. You got, excuse my language, um, but uh, you know, I, you know, yeah, 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 there's my, there's my money in there." But I, I was, well, yeah. I wanted to say though, you know, you're talking about like Rob's fat cat and all that, but I, I like lost a friendship, a good friendship, because there was a. A friend that my wife and I knew who had this really fat cat. I mean, I mean, it was this this cat was seriously a beast, and the cat's name was Muffin. And then I said, it was like, hey, why don't you change the names and you know, the cat's name to Stuffin? 
oh god she blew up i mean she was like furious it, it was like yeah i lost a friendship over that trying to remember so. what uh, michael o'donnell i think they named their cat cow <laughs> something like that some you know yeah but muffin to stuff and that is like you know yeah Oh, yeah. This stuff and yeah, yeah. whatever. Who's who's the? Uh, I'm bad bad with it. I can't come up with a name tonight. Somebody help me with this. A Republican politician we absolutely hate. The guy who's the head of the John uh, Boehner. John Boehner. John Boehner. I want you to uh, take a look, Doug. Just look straight forward. Doesn't he look like John Boehner? Kinda. <laughs> little huh? bit, yeah. He's not orange. Wait, wait a minute. I'm going to do this for the TV people. <laughs> Except you know uh, that he doesn't. Doesn't he look like John Boehner? And I think I I, well, I think he drinks as much as John nope, Boehner he's got too. To the wine. Huh? I don't know if he drinks as much as John Boehner. There there we go, TV people. You get a, a whole. Uh, doesn't that doesn't he look like John Boehner? Oh uh, yeah. I have uh, to see a picture. Only if I had him. Uh, what? I, I I tan very well. Anyway, so uh, good. <laughs> good. Um, uh, now I want to I want to ask um, um, Rob something because uh, oh, Rob's got his hand up. Yeah, I wanted to go back to you were telling about the bed bug story. So, oh, it's got to be thirty some odd years ago. I was still <laughs> living home in my parents' house. Yeah. And uh, in my bedroom in my house, right above my bed was a wall air conditioner. You know, instead of going through the window, it went through the wall, and and it died, and it was a <laughs> time of the season where we couldn't get a replacement air conditioner in there so i had this bright idea to get oh i had this wall air conditioner and i wedged it in there and at least so i had air conditioner in the room and it was there for maybe six weeks or two months or whatever and then i noticed i was hearing i was hearing rustling going on in there and <laughs> some birds built a nest in there and i heard chicks and so, you know, there were little chicks. I wake up in the morning and I hear the chicks, you know, going. One night, I'm laying in bed and all night long, I'm just scratching my head and I'm going, uh -oh. oh, man. Oh, no, and no, no, I just, no. I kept dealing with it. You know, I'd wake up and then I go back to sleep. It's finally about 7 a.m. I, I, I'm scratching. I, 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 I get up, I look at my pillow, white pillowcases. Ah. You couldn't see the white pillowcase, it was just covered with these like mites or something. I don't know what they oh, were. Wonderful. Wow. And it just oh, I leaped out of the bed. I I just freaked out. I, I jumped in the shower. You know, you I'm know what you, you know what these stories are doing to people now. They're gonna <laughs> go to sleep tonight and yeah, they're just gonna yeah. start scratching from here having head. heard these Forget stories. That. It's like Beetlejuice with those bugs coming out. Well yeah. They were all in my hair and oh well, at least it wasn't feathers. <laughs> it chopped up birds. No. I was thinking they were going to say the bird's been shitting on you all night. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> this little buck, and it just it looked like the pillow was yeah. moving. Hey, well, the thing I wanted, to, I wanted you to impart to people. Can I ask Rick a question? Kind of, I was going to talk to Rob here about something, I'm sorry. Doug. Go ahead. Rob. And certainly it's got to, even if it was about nothing, it would be more important than what you just had to say. <laughs> uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, is everybody enjoying the humor in all of this or uh, I'm just, I, I love it you you That's love the, it you, the you, back and forth with you and Doug is radio gold Alex. It, it's radio gold <laughs> absolutely yeah, well I it's love driving it. me crazy Anyway, I, I know that's why it's radio gold that's so, why it's radio you know, gold. I'm sorry. oh wait a minute uh, uh, Miranda yes Miranda okay so the entire thing with the up clip, it's not because he's old. It's because he's always trying to get oh, it done and don't annoyed by Doug. I was only kidding you. Don't <laughs> oh, stop it. Don't worry. She, you know, you know what, Miranda. No, uh, I, you're doing it again right now. You're this. This is the perfect example uh, uh, of why that's why that clip is is just perfect between you two. Especially Max from that clip. Max from Germany says, "Radio Gold, ha ha." Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, so uh, uh, what I wanted to say. You're getting to me. Uh, what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I wanted Rob to. Um, oh, there's one thing about Miranda that everybody should know. Uh, she she overthinks everything. Mm -hmm. She yeah, is the a, the world well, champion overthinker, right? Right, uh, Jim. 
That's why she's a program. <laughs> it goes hand in hand with. Well, because geekiness. because we all you know. talk to each other, you know, and we. Yes. Was... Since she admits, since she admits it, I will, I will, I will second that. Yes, yeah. she thinks things very thoroughly through. Sometimes, she's like my wife. My wife is an overthinker. You know, I mean, I, I had a perfect show last night, except Alex and, wrote me and told me I mislabeled and... my 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 uh, show, and I'm going. But that's not a biggie. That's, you know, it's not like you mispronounced a word or your equipment made noise or whatever. It's, you know, don't, don't overthink it. Anyway, what I want to say to She's Rob a perfectionist. is Rob, because he, he uh, overworks himself. And, uh, you know, you could do shorter uh, rewinds if you it's, wanted it's, to. Uh, that wouldn't really save any time. Really? <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, if I'm cutting up a clip that's five minutes or yeah. 55 minutes, I still have to listen to the yeah, whole show. Uh, the right? only thing I feel sorry for you about is you have to listen to this crap. I, I well, <laughs> I, that's, this is how I get on Friday night. I, this is, this is how I get on, on Friday night. I tell my wife, I have to listen anyway. Yeah. So I could either listen, and I've taken notes here about some things I want to do. And so I'd either have to listen tonight or tomorrow morning, I'd have to listen. So either way, it's time. Could I say this? I could never do your job. Yeah. I could never do it. You know? Why? Why? Uh, I, and, and Miranda's saying the same thing, and so is Jim. It's just there is some kind of thing in you that gives you the skill and the patience to do it. I would just not have the patience to listen to all the shows and find the few moments that I want to take out of it and here and there. And, and the way you package it with you making comments about it, it's brilliant. It's just absolutely exactly. brilliant. Huh? Yes. Were you gonna say, yeah. yeah. I don't Especially even like to listen smart. to myself. What? I yeah. like listening to myself, and that's I, I have a big problem when I fill in. I don't like to listen to my show. I have trouble. I want to leave the whole thing out. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing now. Here, tomorrow night, well, I had this interview with uh, John Lennon. Uh, and uh, we, uh, I don't know where the original audio I had came from, but I think that was something that Sirius put together, Sirius XM. And the other, the source, was the actual original tapes. And the sound was much better when I got you the new tapes, right? Much better, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it, but tell them a little bit about the John Lennon show tomorrow night, because what's amazing is you as a historian, uh, because I didn't re number one, I didn't realize it was forty what three, three years, forty three years, years, and it's, it's the, I was able to Google it. I actually found there's a website that I found, and I don't know that I still have it open here. Uh, yeah, here it is. It's uh, it's called um, uh, "You Are the Plastic Ono Band Radio Interviews," and it lists every Len Yoko interview. Like going all the way back, and it, wow. it lists your couple with it. It lists, um, and that's how I got the dates. Yeah. Alex Bennett, WPLJ, transmitted live, 29th September 1971. Another interview with Alex Bennett, but this time just Yoko. Um, yeah. And there's so, and the one I did a couple with Yoko actually. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and the, uh, so I, I, I was like, look at this. And then I saw the date. And I said, that's coming up. So I said, look at this. And it, that, how I found out about the Frank Zappa thing was because it says two nights after he was on stage with Zappa. So then I went and I, it was at the Fillmore East. So then I went ahead and I did some research on that and I sort of co to corroborate the so fact the that the show it, it, must it, it, have been on the air on a Monday, right? Tuesday. The, the, Tuesday. The, the eighth so, was a Tuesday because if if he was playing with Zappa, that would probably be on a Saturday night at the film. Would have been Sunday night. Oh, it was Sunday night. Okay. Yeah, it was Sunday night, and he played there two night. Well, it, the Fillmore East show took place um, June fifth and sixth. He was there on the night of the sixth. Uh, um, Lennon was there on on the night of the sixth, and uh, it says here as an encore, one of the two nights, uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono emerged. And they played a half hour set and, you know, they released that on their own label or on his own uh, separately from the the album that was released, which was called. Um, well, where's the name of the album here? Live or something. Or... Yeah, I, uh, I, I um, I'm trying to remember. I may have actually been at that concert, but I can't remember. I think I was so hyped during those years. I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, live yeah. album by the Mothers. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seventy one. Yeah. So I mean, anyway, he finds out all this stuff, and I'm going, you know, I mean, this is this is stuff I've forgotten. When you said forty three years, I went, what the <laughs> fuck? Forty three <laughs> years. That's We're crazy, old. isn't it? And then you had it nailed down that this Sunday will be the forty third anniversary of that interview. Right. Which is not a bad interview, by the way. No, not at all. A lot not of very revealing stuff, yep. including yep. the fact that he gets served with papers while we're on the air. I th it should have been in the middle of the interview, but somebody might have excised it or something. Well, you know, this, what you sent me, I, had a, I think I sent you this in an email. What you sent me did not include the summons. The whole, there was more of the interview there than the segments that I originally got. Yeah. But that segment of him being uh, served... Yeah. I had to run it with that other clip. I'm, I did I'm, it at I'm the end of the show. I'm sitting there interviewing John and Yoko, right? And as we're doing that, the door opens, and a guy walks in and says, you're John Lennon. I, I, I can't remember what the dialogue is there, and hands him a summons. And then on his way out, he turns around, and I don't know if you can hear this on the tape, and looks at me and goes, love your program. No, I didn't hear that part. Yeah. Uh, it, um, and then John got so upset that he had to leave the studio and go to the bathroom and throw up. <laughs> wow. Um, and then he talks about, like, donating the, what, he's going to donate the vomit or something because you were making a comment <laughs> yeah. that everybody was going to, you know, they were going to, like, cherish that bathroom for a while. <laughs> yeah, right. Every little <laughs> speckle of vomit they were going to, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it's it, taking a good stride. He, he mentioned what it was about with the MacLen stuff, with the, yeah, the yeah. northern was it Northern Star? Or well, North? it, it all had to do with Alan Klein and the Eastmans, and uh, you know, uh, Lennon versus uh, versus McCartney's family, because uh, every you know everybody wanted a piece of them, and uh, it, you know you you didn't get any lower than uh, Alan Klein. Uh, who, uh, you know, before he pretty much ruined the career of the Stones before they went out and got other management, uh, now had his hands on, on at least three quarters of the Beatles. But then you had the Eastmans, who were Ghanifs in their own right, you know. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a pretty, but it was pretty interesting to have that thing go on there with him being served and then him throwing up. And I heard you say that you have another interview from the Grammys. Yes, but I have no I've lost it years ago. It might be somewhere in some box somewhere. It's at three and three quarter inches per second. If, if you find it, look right above here. That's yeah. what I got here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I have oh, no yeah. idea. I have no idea. I, I think it's lost to the ages. But oh, it was, I, you know, I had Bowie. Bowie was on there with him. And uh, oh, uh, I, I think I think it was uh, 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 Art Garfunkel and Yoko oh. and on another line. They were like a couple lines. I think Billy Preston was on one of the lines. Oh. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, it was uh, quite an evening. Yes, San Doug. Francisco? Yes, Doug. You know, you know, this was in New York. Oh, it was in New York. Yeah. Uh, Doug? Yeah, you mentioned our Garfunkel. He's going to be in concert here. And it's like, I, yeah, I really don't know if I want to go see the guy because, I mean, I appreciate, you know, the art and music and all that. But, I mean, it's like, I, I, yeah, I think the guy, like, lost his voice not too long ago. And but you know, like talk about like the the mothers. Have you, do, do you do? Uh, can you, Doug? Let me <laughs> let me try to explain something to you here. Do you feel you just contributed something here? I'm going to contribute. No, 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 no. no, no going, I, to, going to it with as much time as you spend up. going to is a vacant promise. Uh, no, but it, uh, what, what I was going to contribute to the main thing you're talking about, like John Lennon and all that, and like you know, showing the interview and all that. Now I'm sure everybody's seen the you know the scene with you know John and Yoko nude with their butts posed, but have you ever seen have you ever seen the frontal pose with them? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I actually have the LP, LP or I may have sold yeah. it. Two I, mean, I mean, John's like you know not circumcised. You know, he's you two know, virgins. Pretty good sizer. So uh, you're gonna show that also? I didn't spend a lot. Of time Why would I show that, it? I'm doing but... radio. What's that? Why would I show it? I'm doing radio. Hey, you do it while you're on uh, Skype there. 
I had the album. I think I, I think I let go. I think I sold it actually years ago when I sold out a lot of my LPs. But uh, uh, that now, was, I've, never, I've never seen that picture before. I was like on that website Image Bath, and I like typed in vintage nudes, and there was like John and Yoko, and I was like, wow. Is that, so is that what you did when uh, when you saw it there? Yeah. Uh, all the time. Yeah, he. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what, what's interesting is that album uh, came out on Try. It was what was the name of the label? But it was owned by Bill Cosby. Really? Yeah, <laughs> Bill Cosby released that album, uh, and it was called Two Virgins, and it was basically you know a lot of experimental stuff yeah. more than anything else. Are you still there, Jim? <laughs> Jim? Yeah, what, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, we lost your pic. First, we lost you, and then you came back, and you don't have a picture. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Miranda's frozen. Miranda's frozen? No, she's, no, she's not. not. She just stunned at everything uh, Doug has to say. Yes. Okay. You know, she she is the woman in the group, and yeah, and, and she's having to deal with these <laughs> with these bunch of immature males here. Well, well, oh, Emma Teresa. There. I Teresa. just saw Teresa because uh, Rick isn't there right now, so now we have two women. What do you think of this of this this testosterone filled uh, network we've got here? Wait a minute, <sighs> wait, you got to turn your mic on. Hello, you, you muted yourself. No, that was Rick who did that. Oh, bad he, Rick. He costs a lot, so um, I just sit on the side and listen <laughs> and laugh because. When he's away for the week, I also listen to the show. Yeah. I'm listening, you know, as I'm cleaning or exercising or doing laundry or something. So yeah. um, you guys are quite amusing. Yeah, but it is testosterone. You take the road on the show. I mean, that, I mean show on the road. <laughs> show on the road. I mean, that's the reason. The Let's go on tour. <laughs> that's the reason I'm. I'm fucking on you. Yes. Okay. Who, who's been drinking there? Yeah. None. None of no. us. I am, uh, that's the reason I'm so glad that we have been uh, at, we've added to our our uh, little band of idiots uh, Miranda uh, because uh, uh, she, classes she, has, up the place. she she classes up the place yeah <laughs> in her own way but I mean when I heard a show last night for uh, let me see here 20 minutes at least just on coffee and pressing coffee and mm -hmm. where you buy and I was fascinated. And then she worries yeah, about she has great. nothing to talk about. And she looks at the clock and goes, I've been talking about coffee for 20 minutes. <laughs> well, I think that's, you know, we talk, we were just talking about her being over analytical and overthinking things. You know, she, I, she can make probably the most minu minutia interesting. Yeah. You know, you could probably talk about you know something that we would never even think to care about and you could probably make it interesting by the way we have on our um, on our uh, uh, live stream tonight uh, uh this guy marcus main from, Aus from australia and and, New glasses, Zealand, and and he uh keeps running uh certain notes like four hundred thousand allied losses in the first few days of oh, it's got to be forty thousand. Wouldn't be? Would it be four hundred thousand? Four hundred thousand doesn't sound right, does it, uh, Josh? A little high. It, and just in the first few days? Yeah. That no, that doesn't sound right. Um, I mean, it's it says four. He has four hundred point zero zero. It's I don't know what he was trying to say here. Um, probably forty, maybe forty thousand. Forty thousand, if it's. Oh, I know what he's talking about. Stalingrad. Oh, okay. No, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Russians taking Stalingrad, Germans, six core. I, I don't know what he's trying to say here. But it's nice that we're getting somebody from Australia writing us, so. Yeah. You know. um, Good eye, mate. Well, so what did you do, Rick? Push <laughs> Teresa out of the way? Yep, just shove her right out. <laughs> Oh boy! She knows her place. <laughs> Jim, are they making a big deal out of D-Day up there? Is, uh, by the way, they found the guy who shot the cops. Yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they picked him up and everything. I like the story of the uh, uh, the uh, the eighty-nine-year-old who went missing from his rest home 
and everybody was panicked, and he and, the, and he wound up in uh, Normandy. They found him in Normandy. Yeah, I just saw that. What do you mean? Yeah, he, wanted to, he wanted to go, so he kind of escaped the rest home and went by himself. <laughs> really, I didn't see that story. Yeah, it's floating around there. That's pretty good. Oh, that's very that's sweet. That's a sweet story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's terrific. Um, the um, um, uh, oh oh Dan. Dan Meyer. Oh, uh, well, this gets back off topic, back to the John Lennon and Yoko Ono thing. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people really disliked Yoko's music. I don't know if you're one of them, but uh, I remember I was, uh, you know, working at the college radio station. It's like 2 in the morning. I'm looking for stuff to play. I find a whole Yoko Ono album. I'm like, I'm going to waste an hour and play this whole thing. And I was really into it. It okay, pretty, let me explain was, something to you. I mean, let okay, me explain something to you because John, John quoted me in later years uh, when it, when they finally the, the the final album was coming out and they were talking about it and about Yoko's abilities or her lack of them. He said, and he was ref, he was referring to me. He said there was a disc jockey in San Francisco in New York City who I knew who said, and I was always quoted as having said this, back in the day, that what Yoko is doing now may sound weird to you, but within 20 years, people are going to be doing this. And it the was, fact of the matter was, that's exactly what happened. I, I remember choose? specifically Lena Levitch. I don't know yeah. if you remember Lena yes. Levitch, but if you listen to what she was doing, that was kind of what Yoko was doing. Uh, and... Um, so I was uh, always very proud that I kind of that John remembered that I had said this, yeah. And uh, I think that was one of the reasons he kind of liked me is because I actually saw the value in Yoko when everybody was ready to put mm -hmm. her down. But I always felt that their disdain for Yoko was purely racist. I, I bet also because I don't know. they no. could, they blame her for the breakup of the Beatles. Break of the Beatles, yeah. yeah. Uh, and she and the, she wasn't the re you know the breakup of the Beatles was. More than anybody, Linda Eastman. Nobody really? ever blamed her. That Eastman family just so wanted possession of Paul, you know, oh. that that uh, you know they they had no chance of survival uh, at that point. And they had also come to a point where I think that they just felt they had said everything they could say together. And uh, I, and I pretty much agree with that. I think had they. I, I wouldn't have never wanted to see the Beatles reunite because if they did, it probably would have been a huge disappointment. Well, they, they came out with some song on the... the, the Free the, the Bird. Yeah, that was a big disappointment. There. I wonder if that's the song that John... In the interview, you asked John... You said there was a rumor that there was like 12 hours of um, unreleased material, and John said, let me hear it. I don't know of any. There's this one. He claimed they had used every bit of material that yeah, they had. Yeah, with the exception of one, I think, I don't know if he said 12 bar or 40 bar song. He said there's one thing. I wonder, when I heard that, I thought maybe that's that song, because he said it was crap. And uh, it might have been that song that uh, they took free as a bird. Well, the best, the best, the most, the most. His version of free as a bird on the piano is is out there well what's pretty damn interesting is um is john is uh, the anthology album in which they took all everything that wound up on the cutting room floor and put it in this album alternate versions of things yeah. and so on but if you listen to that there is nothing new in all of that it, it's all alternate versions of things it's a uh, Test runs on stuff, uh, solo versions of, of you know demo, demo tapes and so on, but it's all the same songs. Right. Hey, Alex. Yes. Uh, Do you think if they would have broke, if they would have stayed together, I always wondered would they, have, would John have put out his like, you would, would you have heard his songs like McCartney and him solo? Well, you I know, would have made to the album would have been left out. Well, you know something. If you go back and you listen, and I, I've often been amazed by it. One day I. I decided I was getting my car going to do nothing but listen to all Lennon music after the Beatles to see what I thought of it. Because at the time he was doing it, I, I was, you know, I didn't know. Did I like it? Didn't I like it? You know? And when I went back and listened to it after the fact, 
actually his stuff was better than anything any of the others did after uh, the Beatles. I think so. Uh, and I mean, things like uh, Cold Turkey, for instance, an amazing piece of music. Um, Imagine's a great song. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you compare it to all that crap that McCartney's done over the years, and and Harrison was a nice guy, but his stuff was, you know, it was. Well, I now I liked Harrison's stuff. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, I would say he was second to uh, John. I would say he was certainly better than anybody gave him credit for or allowed him to be at the time. But but, but 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 Lennon was amazing. I mean, songs like Mother. You go to some of those albums yeah. where he just was him and a piano, you know, and every other track was Yoko. And I always loved Working Class Hero. Another great song. But all, I think some of Lennon's best work happened after the Beatles rather than during it. Although he did write what I consider the, the greatest song of all, and that was In My Life, That's which is song. just an absolutely... Is that Rubber Soul, Alex? Yeah. Uh, no, that was, was that Rubber Soul? Yeah, I, guess I think so. it was yeah. on Rubber I think Soul. it was, yeah. I mean, if you listen to the lyrics of that, I mean, they're just amazing. And look, I often argued that Lennon... There were three great lyricists in the 20th century. One of them was Cole Porter, who if you ever listen to Cole Porter lyrics, they are just perfect poetry. I mean, they're wonderful, just wonderful. The second one I always mention is Lennon. You know, he could write a lyric that fit like the glove on a hand. Every, every word just somehow just flowed right into the next. I mean, just amazing lyrics. And if you listen in my life, those lyrics are just, they're gold. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the other one, believe it or not, is Chuck Berry. Uh, if you listen to Chuck Berry lyrics, they're amazing. I don't get Chuck Berry. You don't get Chuck Berry? No, I just don't get it. I don't get that. My uh, tingling. <laughs> well, I mean, to begin with, to begin with, to begin with, basically, he created rock and roll. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, what he was doing was it, it basically became the basis for what we later on. Uh, I think we just lost Jim again. Uh, I hope he has a signal tonight to do the show. Um, no, he's he wants to pass on his regrets. He needs to dash before. His show. Oh, okay, good. No, I understand that. Um, uh, the 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 thing is that uh, uh, with Chuck Berry is is that uh, he I think wrote some amazing lyrics. Um, one of my favorite lines of his is a song called "Sweet Little Sixteen. Yeah. And in one of the versions, not all the versions were the same of all his songs, but in one of the versions that I heard the recording that has one of the greatest lines I've ever heard in rock and roll. It said, she must be good because bad things don't draw crowds. Mm. <laughs> you know, a little piece of philosophy like that. Uh, 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 you never can tell. One of my favorite songs it is because it's so weird in its lyric structure. Uh, it was a teenage wedding, and the old folks wished him well. You know, uh, he truly loved the Mademoiselle. Uh, you hear the chapel bell; it goes to show you never can tell. I mean, just great lyrics. So you know, you might go back. I mean, I love Chuck, and of course, my ding a ling. Well, yeah, yeah you know, you I boogied yeah. in the. Uh, I boogied in the basement. I boogied in the hall. I boogied on my finger and I wiped it on the wall. You know, I <laughs> come on. You can't beat lyrics like that. Now, wasn't there a point to where um, Chuck Berry was like shitting on stage and stuff? No, no, no. He never shit on stage. He only shit on women. Oh, okay. I uh, thought this was the, like something on stage. It, there's did. a famous audio tape of, uh, of of Chuck Berry having sex with a woman. And I mean, she's going, what her. the hell is this? And he says, hey, baby, it's just a little shit or something like that. He shit on the woman. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yes, Doug. I said yes, Doug. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Um yeah, yeah not going back from Chuck. You were too busy listening to the voices in your head, were you? There's there's lots of voices, so they drowned it out yours, so I apologize for that. But anyway, getting back to Linda McCarthy there. I, I McCarthy? Think was like McCarthy? Yeah, she was... Uh, Carly's sister. 
You mean yeah, the, I had my hand raised for a long time. You know, with, yeah, and all the blood oh, rushed from your head down so to far, your hand. So my arm is my arm is numb. But anyway, but you're talking about like Linda McCarthy, but I I think there was like a lawsuit because like my it's was, McCartney. McCartney. McCartney, whatever. McCartney, you know, Joe. It's a plan. Plan. Whatever. The Beatles. It's how many? Yeah. How many vote that that Doug is drunk right now? I'm not drunk. Uh, how many? Uh, 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 that's uh, what Rick, they all drunk, say. Not drunk. Not drunk. Drunk. Uh, drunk. Uh, drunk. Rob, no. drunk, not drunk. He's. Uh, can He's you, drunk. Can you say Wu Tang Clan? Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> oh. Okay, so you're voting for drunk, right, Rob? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, Dan, drunk, okay. yeah, not drunk. 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 Uh huh. Right. How about you, Josh? Drunk, not drunk. I guess drunk. <laughs> well, Rob, you got something to put for your rewind show. Anyway, but uh, wait a minute. Hold on, Mark. Drunk, not drunk. No, nope, I don't think he's drunk. You don't think he's really? drunk? I don't think so. You I'm mean, buzzing, you, you mean there's no I'm excuse for this? But I will not get in a car. I would not get in a car. Like huh? Yeah, Mar he's got something going on. Wait, 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 Miranda, Miranda, Miranda drunk, 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 not drunk. drunk. I'm going to say not drunk, but pretty heavily buzzed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit I'm buzzed, but I'm not. Yeah. Uh, uh, but Tony, I'm drunk, not, not drunk. I would not get in the car. Uh, I don't, well, I'm going to say no. You're going to say no. Okay, well, 50% of us uh, think you're, you're drunk. That's fine. I think fine. we should get him a breathalyzer, and we can have him test his, how drunk he is yeah. on, on the show. What we should I do is have should... him get all dressed up and then have him say all the stuff he says and tell, just say it's John Boehner. We should, we should uh, hook up a breathalyzer to Doug's computer, so in order to get on the show, he has to pass the breathalyzer. Oh, be good. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. Anyway, if you want to pay for it, that's fine with me. Anyway, but... um. Anyway, I was going to say about like Linda McCarthy, though, like when she was with Linda McCartney. She was Linda McCartney. McCartney. I don't give a fuck. Anyway. You know, well, if you don't give a fuck, why are you talking about her? the greatest band that ever existed. Go ahead. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, okay. Whatever. Anyway, I, I, I never saw him. In but anyway, like, supposedly, like, they, they sued because, like, you know, when they played, like, you know, her background singing. She was horrible in it. And it was like, you know, like they have released where she was like doing the background. Yeah, we know. We've all and, heard it. Yeah. yeah. And I heard it. And it was like, yeah, Paul, I'm not going to say the last name, but um, Mc yeah, McCarthy. You know, sued, like, yeah, you better not release that. We'll sue you if you release that thing and all that. But um, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Shall we just pause here and wait and see if maybe you. Have something gonna, to say. I'm gonna turn reflect, it for the and reflect on that. No, but I, I'm just saying it was, it was just sort of like here it was, you know, you know, she's like, you know, part of the, you know, the big member, you know, the second wing of uh, Wings, and you of know, Wings. Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney and Wings. There was a group called Ween, Ween by the way. Ween, Great yeah, group. Ween, they were an awesome the band. I loved them. So, Paul McCartney was not played with Ween. Wings. So anyway, so I, I just kind of found it like kind of ironic that all of a sudden it's like you know when it's like what she really sounds like it's like no you cannot you know release this because yeah right. we know all she right. sounds all like all right. all right shut up Doug. Shut okay. Up. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 what have we learned? Any, anyway, um, um, uh, where, where was I? Um, he completely derailed me. <laughs> Um, I'm going to turn in, Alex. I'll talk okay, to you, you can't wait no, another. No, 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 you can't, can't wait another. You can't wait another five minutes. No, but you can't wait another five okay, minutes. The show is almost over in five okay. minutes. I wasn't sure what time. Okay, okay. And plus, you got to hear more stories about Linda McCarthy. By the way, by the way, Ween Ween wrote one of my favorite songs of all time, "Piss Up a Rope." Did you ever hear that? Oh yes. yeah! Oh, I I love it's weed. Okay. I Take a fucking hike and piss up a rope. It's piss like a breakup rope. song. Yep. Yep. The only other great breakup song I can remember is Nilsson with "You're Breaking My Heart." Uh, You've torn it apart, so oh, fuck, so you. fuck you. Yep. <laughs> I was in college radio and I was doing my one of my first shows, and a friend of mine yeah. said, "Hey, call me up. You sound great. Why don't you do me a favor and play a request?" It's off the Nielsen Son of Schmielsen album. Yeah. You're breaking my heart. Sure, I put it on the air and... <laughs> oh, boy. Program director calls you. 
Nobody heard it, luckily. Yeah, you've yeah. broken my heart. You've torn it apart. That's, that's, so that's the one you, get, that's you the Miranda, one good thing Miranda. I don't remember yes. where I got exposed to this group, but there's this group called the Notorious Cherry Bombs, and they have a song <laughs> called It's Perfect. Hard to Kiss the Lips at Night That Chew Your Ass Out All Day Long. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, that's a good one. That was about my ex-wife. <laughs> Who was? I'm trying to remember the it's name. It's just a great country song. It, it, <laughs> uh, uh, who who was the female group who couldn't really sing, but their Frank Zappa the called them the greatest group in the world. The Shags. The Shags. Oh, yeah. oh my God! <laughs> the Shags. Man. Oh, oh, oh. The Shags it's were Halloween, the the Halloween. Yeah. The, the, you ever heard the Shags, Miranda? I have not. Just look oh, up. Boy. Just, well, just YouTube, I don't know. Go, go to YouTube or whatever and, and look up the shags. There is something about them. And you know something? There's something very sweet about what they what they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really. It's that movie it's called The Fabulous Stains. That, they remind me of that movie in you know, the girl group, you know, The Fabulous Stains. That's what they remind me of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait a minute. Let me see here. Can I? Uh, where? Uh, well, I can't get. Uh, Oh, there, there's my <laughs> iTunes. Let me see here. Let's go to yeah, the iTunes think, store. Know. Well, what I always find is if I go to the iTunes store, I then get a truncated version. And, and so I'm just I think the Shags would probably about. be safe to play because who's going to go shags. after you for playing the Shags? Uh, probably. Uh, uh, here, here we go. The surviving sisters. Everybody be quiet because uh, I'm playing it on the same line that you guys are on. But listen, you'll hear. This is this is the Shags. <laughs> <laughs> now their other big song was My Pal Foot Foot. My Pal Foot Foot. Here yes. <laughs> I sound just the same as that uh, last time. Shut up, Doug. <laughs> Do you know who knows uh, Wesley That's Willis? That's the best group ever. Come on. <clears throat> who knows Wesley Willis? Oh, Wesley Willis. I had yes. Wesley Willis on my show. Yeah. He actually performed fantastic. live on my show in San Francisco. Wait a yeah. minute. Wesley Willis. Wait a minute. He, he was he, a paranoid schizophrenic from Chicago. He yes. was a... <laughs> uh, here, here we go. This is... Uh, this is uh, this is uh, Wesley Willis. Let me see here. Oh, here we go. I whooped Batman's ass. Yes, that's great. Batman's ass. I whooped Batman's ass. I know all these songs. I whooped Batman's ass. <laughs> that's Wesley. Batman Wes thought he was fat. Nope. Yeah, anyway, I had the guy on live on my show in San Francisco. Hey, you know something? That's, We're running out of time here, yeah. uh, and we didn't play enough of any of those things to I break know. the Millennium Digital Copyright Act. So you know, on the on the day, oh, real quick, on the day Wesley Willis died, I ha I did my radio show. I happen to have it. Yeah, I'm probably the only person ever. I played an hour's worth of Wesley Willis music on the wow. day he died, and, and people were probably so. trying, wanted to kill you. Maybe so, but yeah. I didn't care. I loved it. They said they said we'd rather listen to Doug. Possibly. A anyway, hey, now listen. He disappeared. We've run out of time, Rob. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Don't forget, Rob's doing the uh, weekends for us with his uh, his uh, wonderful Gabnet Rewind, plus yeah. the Lennon Yoko Ona interview, forty third anniversary on the day of its broad original That's broadcast. Awesome. Uh, uh, if you don't ever hear Miranda. You've missed something. She's on Tuesdays and Thursday nights right here on GabNet. And Still really, I'm, I'm, she's so good, she doesn't even know how good she is. Uh, Mark Thorner, thank you, as always. Uh, Dan Meyer, uh, uh, let me see here. Of course, Josh Wheeler, our historian. Rick Horn, good talking to you. Tony, go to sleep yeah. now. And of course, <laughs> there's somebody else I left out here, but... Uh, Teresa's still there. Oh, Teresa. That's right. We lost out on Teresa. Uh, and uh, 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 Squirrel. Uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. We'll see you Monday. Okay. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you again uh, 
Monday. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, yeah, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.